We are here today in the awesome presence of God and to call out God's holy name in hope. As far as the heavens are above the earth, God's ways are above my ways. But we come with confidence because in Christ we are called to be God's people. Come let us worship, bow our hearts and our spirits before God, our Creator and our Savior, Christ Jesus. Let us pray. We gather this day, O Lord, as people who seek your guiding love. Open our hearts and make us ready to stand firm in the faith that leads to loving service. Create a new people in this place and in our hearing so that your love may surround all who enter and all who have gathered here today. We ask these things. In Jesus' most holy name, amen. Jeremiah 31. It is interesting as we get ready to read these scriptures that there's a new day coming, a post-COVID day. And in that time, the church and the culture and society will have changed. While we might go back to a lot of things that we did before, we will be always weary looking over our shoulders at the next or the opportunity or the, the next tragedy that could befall us, not only in a country, a single country or a state, but a whole world. Hear these words from Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness and because of this he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to the, him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I sometimes wonder what modern day people want out of their leaders. We have some wonderful leadership models, but then at the same time we have leadership models that cause distress among people. And sometimes we forget that leaders are called to be of a higher quality, a higher character, to be more noble than even the people themselves. God has called each of us, according to this Hebrews passage, to be priests 
leaders among the people. While we are not perfect, and that was recognized by the writer of Hebrews, because he said that even the high priest had to offer a sin sacrifice for himself because of his own weaknesses. Maybe he didn't speak kindly to someone. Maybe he was harsh. Maybe he was unforgiving. All those things had to be dealt with within the limitations of the leadership that was provided. But God recognized that and then provided a way for us to become whole as a leader. And that is through Jesus Christ. That is through looking at, well, what is the best that we can possibly be? But there's some things that we need to be very attuned to in order to be good leaders. And I want to draw our attention to some of them today. The very first one is that we have to be called of God. God is always calling new leaders. Even, my, even myself, as I near retirement, my job, even during the course of my ministry, was to find replacements for me that would hear the call of God. God's leaders must he hear and then respond. They need to understand that this is a calling, not a vocation. The other thing, the next thing, is God's leaders have to care for people and their situations. Sometimes we get confused and we worry about our own situations when God is really saying, look, look at the people. They are a sheep without a shepherd. They are the people that I sent you to, not they to you. See, I believe that sometimes leaders are also called to show people or to bring people to realize the reality of their situation. We understand sometimes the troubles that we're in. And during the next couple months, the church will go through a transition of this post-pandemic uh, time in our life. Some churches have been out, some out of in-person worship. Some have maintained it at, a, at a, a terrible price to the people within. Some have maintained it out of pride, like we're not going to have anybody tell us what to do, instead of, are we the caring and loving servants of a loving, caring God? We need to be very clear about the reality of our situation. And we also need to seek a vision of what God has for us. While we can live victorious lives, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have our own way. In fact, God is is trying to project a, an image of a leader who suffers for the people, much like Christ suffered for the, for the whole world. That is our example. And when we fail to, to recognize that example and live up to that example, then, well, we miss the opportunity to do what God has called us to do. And it, even in doing what God's called us to do, the plan of God is very simple. The church is not to build big, big buildings, not to have a great online presence, not to, not to have a great social service calling or even a mission calling. Our God's plan for us is simply to be examples of the grace and the mercy of God to the whole world. It's not about our hopes and dreams, but it's about God's hope and dream that none would be lost, all would be saved. And then a leader's job is to keep before the people, the community of faith, that call. We are not to be concerned about what makes us look good as a leader, but to be concerned about how our leadership is leading people to do God's will. And then there are times when the leader, well, he has to recognize that the people need more than just their blind faith. They need to have a sense of hope. And so it is our job as leaders, much like the, pro like the, the calling of Christ, he learned through his suffering so he could lead the people to new heights. And sometimes, well, 
sometimes it's hard to accomplish the great goals that we set before ourselves, but really changing one life for Christ is the greatest goal that any Christian can set. See, I believe we are on a journey. We are journey, on a journey with God, for God, and we only have a little bit of time. I have found in my own life that from one point to another point, from the beginning to the end, has gone so fast. 46 plus years of ministry, gone in a moment. I'm looking forward to what God has for me next but it won't be 46 years. And for the church, we need to look forward with new hope, renewed vision, renewed courage, what God has for us. And that is the type of leadership that the church will require for the future. Let us close. Father, we want to thank you for being with us throughout this time and this day. Your presence has been in this place from the start to the end, and we want to say thank you. Lord, as we go about our daily pet task, and we leave this time of reflection and worship, let us go out and be the salt and the light of the world. May we put into practice the things that we have heard today and learned. Help us to make a difference in our world for the glory of your name, where we have, well, sometimes drifted and said things that do not bring glory to your name. We ask that you forgive us, and as you forgive us, give us the courage and the strength to move forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.